Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. It is Friday. Happy Friday morning to you. I hope that your morning is going well. My morning is going great. I'm on the run today. <laughs> I was just listening to a podcast and you know, and it was going through about different seasons in life and different changes in life. And they said, life is not going to be the same. You are going to go through things like no one stays in the same situation in life. And so change, be prepared for change. Like life changes. Everything changes. It's like, it does. So if you don't prepare to be changed, then you're going to hit like burnout. You're going to hit like rock bottom. You're going to put like that anxiety of like, I can't do these things. I can't, you can't do the same thing the same way for so long because it, you go through things, things change in your life. The environments change or whatever. It, it happens to everybody. So if you don't, if you're not willing to change, then you're going to have burnout. You're going to have where you just want to be done. You, you are going to have where you just like give up on things in life and, you know, stay in bed for weeks on end. And you can't be that way. It's like, you got to be prepared. Like, you know what? Change. This is what you're doing. And so I know for myself, it's like we lived in the mountains and we had schedules. We had things that we did and the kids were certain ages and, you know, life was a certain way. And then we moved to Florida and life's just a different way. So Today's not even Friday for me because my Friday is a busy all day long Friday um, where I'm gone all day doing things. And so I was able to film ahead this week, which worked out really good. So today is actually another, um, just the day before, which works out good for me. So I'm able to make some food, get some things, share things with you because that is my heart is to share encouragement for you every day. I want to show you the, the humdrum of life, the not very exciting, you know, I'm not making... 10,000 meals all the time because like, you know, there's not that many people to eat. <laughs> there is a lot. There's still eight people to eat, but not like there used to be 10, 12 people to eat. You know, it just depends on life and what you're doing. And sometimes it's, it's takeout. Sometimes it's grab something quick. Sometimes it's just whatever you do. It, life, life. So you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to like, okay, this is how life's going to go. So you just accept your change. You go for the best that you can do. That's the key to everything. So I have more encouragement. That's a little bit of encouragement. Let me give you a little bit more encouragement today. This is from Psalm 34, 8. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. It saves the crushed in spirit. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good scripture for, for anybody. I know I've gone through things in life where it's like, I feel brokenhearted. I feel like my spirit is just crushed and I'm like, why, why God? And you know, we talk, the Bible talks a lot about God, you know, catching our tears in, in, in bottles and just like none of those are going to go wasted. It's like he will redeem. He will, will be there for you through those times. You know, for myself, it's like, I can, I know where God's presence was, even though I didn't think he was there. And I know he's gotten me through those because you know what? I'm still here. You're still here going through those things. So how can you be an encouragement to someone else going through a difficult time? We have them in friends. I have a, the, the sad thing is, I know sometimes when you go through difficult times, people push you away or they don't want to deal with it or they think that's not their concern. And so they step away and they push away. And that's the sad, sad part. Like to be a friend, like I know in my life, my, I know in my own life and I've seen it in other people's lives. Like you may have tons of people that call you friend, tons of people that call you your friend, but you know what? They walk out of your life. And that goes back to the change thing. Like you think, everything stays the same, but like, I know you've lost friends. I've lost friends. I've, you know, had friends come and go in, in my life, but like true friends, true friends that will catch up with you. will the ones that you don't need to like fill in every single day of your life, like the ones that you can call once a year even and say, Hey, and then do conversations. Like you never even missed a beat on anything. Those are your true friends. Those are the ones that are going to be there through the hard times. The ones that are going to be there checking on you. They may not be able to be there right close but like a phone call away like hey and they'd listen and they'd be there for you that's what like the friend you want to be for people like the ones that are going to be there through the the trials of life the sadness in life the ups and downs because because it's there the downs the lows are hard for people to stick through that because no one wants to stick through a mess nobody wants to be there when your life seems like it's in shambles or whatever it's easy to be there through the good times right the, the rejoicing the great times but being through the hard times that's always a difficult story isn't it so being there for someone. How can you be there for somebody? Just a listening ear. And sometimes it might be a listening ear and for a little bit of time. Like if you have a friend that's just going through something over and over and over and they can't seem to get out of it, you know, pray for them. One. Two, okay, set yourself, even on your phone, give yourself like a 20 minute time window and just go, okay, talk to them. Let them talk. Let them do their thing. Let them know that you're going to have to go. But at least they were able to talk and share some things. Pray for them. Be positive. Sometimes listening and just going, okay, I get it. 
I'm sorry you're going through those things. I am sorry you shouldn't have to. But like feeding into that negativity and no, you deserve, da, 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 da. don't do that. Just like, okay, all right, let's, this is the situation. All right, what can we do? What can God do? What can God do? Because you know the enemy's there. He's got a plan in your life. He's trying to destroy your family. He's trying to destroy your marriage. What is it we can do with God through these things? And helping redirect those negative thoughts in their head towards something positive is a great way to be a good friend to somebody going through things. And sometimes it might just be sending a message, sending a letter of encouragement to somebody if you know you're going, they're going through things. So be that friend to somebody because it's very rare, very rare in today's world. People are there just for the face and just for the superficiality or for the good times. Sometimes they avoid things because they don't want to work through those hard times. Just like marriages, it's hard. Most, most of the world is separated. Most of the world is that because they don't want to work through those harder times and those hard times is when you want to push through and work through things. Same thing with relationships, same thing with jobs. Most people change jobs all day long doing things because they don't want to work through things. I get it if God's calling you or telling you to do something, you got to listen and be obedient. But working through those difficult times, that's like not many people do those things. Not many people do. It's like the perseverance through those things are what's going to get you through those, which is going to get you above those things because you're able to work through, be resilient to things going on around you versus crumbling and falling apart. Don't want to be that way. You don't want to be strong. Strong, strong in the Lord on those things. All right, we ready for a good day? I'm ready for a good day. First thing, we're going to make some soup today. I was talking about soup yesterday and I'm like, soup sounds really good. So it is a nice cooler 79 degrees here in Florida. <laughs> Yesterday it was really hot. You walked outside, it was just muggy right away. Today it's a little bit cooler, so I'm gonna like soup. So I wanted to make, I've got that gnocchi in my um, cupboard that I bought, and I thought, why don't I do cheesy broccoli soup with the gnocchi? Because that was so good, so good. I made it last time. And then I've got potatoes, so I'm gonna do a pot of potato soup. So we'll do a big pot. So even though it's Friday for you, it's not for me, but for the next few days, it will take me into the weekend, we can have soup for lunch. So we're gonna make that. So I'm gonna start right away. I've got my recipe for broccoli cheese soup. Let me do it this way, okay, hopefully. Hopefully that's a good screenshot for you. I'm gonna start right away. You can do this all different ways. I do it like backwards, however you wanna do it. So I'm gonna take my butter here and I'm going to saute an onion. Is it a small onion? This is my ground up onion. I haven't done anything with it. So I'm gonna put this in here. Sometimes a whole lot of this, sometimes too much onion. I'm gonna do a little bit because I need some for my potato soup. We're gonna let this cook, saute for a few minutes. It's got garlic in there. And then we're gonna put flour in there to make it thick and then we'll add liquid and make the chicken boil and then I'll add all the rest of the stuff to it. Okay, I decided to do a little bit more in here because I'm like, hmm, I feel like I'm gonna make a little bit of extra versus like the smaller batch of this. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little bit different than the recipe says, but that's okay. Usually you add this later. So I'm gonna add, add a little bit more butter and up adding all of that container of onion. And I'm gonna put my celery in here so this can kind of saute right now as well. Get that cooked up. And I've got celery, this is all from our little veggie tray. I'll just cut it up and put it in here. And I'll probably cut some carrots up too, saute them because they're fresh and they'll be a little bit harder versus like the frozen broccoli I have. So this will be good. Saute those veggies in here. I put some salt and pepper in here, and then we'll do the carrot. This is so good. This is like one of my favorite. I was like, I had to do a bunch of running this morning. I've been gone for a few hours, and I'm like, I was gonna get something to eat for breakfast, and I'm like, I'm so hungry, but I'm like, I really am looking forward to this soup because it's just that good. So I'm like, well, let me get it cooked up so I'll be able to enjoy this for lunch. And this is great. You can freeze this one, even the gnocchi one. It's so good, and sometimes you don't, you don't need to add the gnocchi, you can just do the broccoli. Obviously, that's how we did it, but the gnocchi in there just makes it so delicious. So I'm just gonna keep chopping these up here, using up those fragments, that's a beautiful thing. Always look in your refrigerator, see what you gotta have used up so nothing goes to waste. That's gonna be a good thing in life, then you don't waste anything. But hopefully you don't get to waste anything, and this freeze is really good too. You want to add flour to thicken it. So I'm going to add, I didn't, I didn't measure my butter, so I'm just going to make sure you mix it till it kind of absorbs all that butter basically, because this is your thickener for soup. So I had to add a little bit more because I've got, there we go. So see how it's, you want it like that, like to absorb all that butter. That is how you make your 
bacon at first, and then you're going to add chicken broth to it. So I'm going to do, I have water, I'm going to add chicken bouillon. So I'm adding more because I'm making my recipe more. So I just want to make sure the broccoli is covered. So I'm just going to let this come to a boil and let that broccoli cook. So we'll bring that up to like normal temperature because it's cold because I have cold water. Let that boil. While that's doing that, I'm going to peel potatoes to start making potato a bacon chowder. A favorite and it's yummy. Over here, I've got my potatoes boiling. I've got this soup. This is so good, so good. So I'm gonna kind of use my meat masher and kind of smush down the broccoli a little bit so it's got some pieces in there. This is gonna be a very thick, hearty soup because you can leave it like this, but I'm gonna add the gnocchi to it and it's gonna make it even better. So this right here, if you just want to leave it like this and then add, um, I've got a can of cheddar cheese right here. And then I have, usually I add milk, but I do have heavy whipping cream. I don't usually ever add that, but I have some left over from our donut making days because um, we only use a tiny little bit. So this, I'm just going to kind of smush this down. Okay, normally if I would add gnocchi, you do it like when it's a little bit, there's a little bit more movement in here. So I'm going to boil it separately and then add it just because I'm like, there's not a whole lot of room to move around in here. It's good. It's good. So I'm going to add cheese to this. I've got water with a little bit of salt over there and that's going to come to a boil. And then that will be um, where I add the gnocchi in there until it's done. And then I'll be able to put it in here. And then I've got heavy whipping cream right here. That's it, right? Still good. And be able to smell all their milk and everything. <laughs> Every time you open it, smell it. Or am I the only one? And then just stir This is like so good. Mm. Cheesy. So if you can add regular shredded cheese in here too, whatever you have. The, not, the canned cheddar cheese just is delicious. So look at that. And then you add paprika to it. Look at how beautiful. So good. This right here tastes so, so good. I'm just gonna put a lid on this. Let this boil. The potatoes are boiling. I'm gonna take the cheese and just put it in some containers. I just placed my order with Amazon. I need to get more containers, so I'm gonna have to just put them in different ones. All right, everything's boiling away. So I'm gonna add my gnocchi in here. I know you can make this your own. I don't mind buying it. It's probably a lot for a little pot, but basically stir it. It will, uh, when it starts to float, it's done. Now. This right here, delicious. I know it's delicious, but I haven't even taken a bite. This smells good. I added a little bit more um, paprika, so a little bit more orangey color versus just yellow, but so good. And those little croutons, these are really good. Great for soups. So yummy. Make this soup, it is so good. And this will freeze really well. Delicious. So we're moving on to the potato soup here. It's gonna need some liquid here. Let me get my milk added. I had to add a little bit more chicken bouillon. I'm actually, oh, gonna be out of chicken bouillon. So note to self, get chicken bouillon ordered. This recipe is one of, it's different. You add a can of creamy mushroom soup to it. Or not creamy mushrooms, creamy chicken soup, which I always thought was weird, but it does taste really good. So I'm going to do two of those in there. I always thought maybe creamy mushroom, but the recipe is my good friend Barb's and um, this, she added creamy chicken to it. So let me add this here. This one's broken. And then you're going to add some milk. There we go. That's gonna add some more to it here. And then just uh, heat that up. 
This is so good. We, we made potato bacon chowder for years. My older ones. We made this with my older ones. It's made it different times over the years. Added ham to it. Different things. Now what I like to do, you can either leave it liquidy like this, but a way to make it thick is by adding potato flakes to it. We do that as well. So this has just got to get thawed because it's frozen in there. So let that heat up and then you're going to add sour cream to it. I added some salt and pepper to this as well. And in the back here, I've got some meat cooking. What are we gonna do with the meat? We're making spaghetti tonight. Something simple, nothing fancy, no meatballs, just get all hamburger and spices. So I've added the container of onions and peppers in there. I'm gonna add a little garlic in here. And I'm just gonna cook this. And then we're gonna add the um, tomato stuff to it to make it taste really good. This one I'm gonna do is add sour cream to it. I've got, I've got a bunch of sour cream thinking we were gonna make all these recipes. I never did. So I'm like, okay, now we gotta use this up. So I have to be intentional here. It's like so much you forget you have it because we use the lactate here so everybody can use it. Um, I know Jensen doesn't like the cheesy broccoli so I don't worry about making that for him. But this taste is just like regular, which is great. But I go on like a kick where we use a lot of sour cream and we don't use a lot of sour cream. And so I'm like, I bought a bunch at Publix, so I'm gonna have to come back. And I'm like, wait a minute, the date's coming up on these. I'm like, we better use these up because um, we need to use them up. Okay, before I said this didn't have the liquid in it. Remember our last one? I was like, is it less liquidy? No, this has got a lot of liquid in it. So I'm just gonna add about a whole one. There we go. We're gonna do something with this one. So this is perfect. I hear Maxine's little feet. Perfect, and this will just finish up the soup here. I'm getting all this done. So this is the um, gonna be spaghetti sauce. This I found in my freezer. Mm. Pretty sure we have sauce, right? No, it's, it's, I think it's just tomato, or maybe it's pizza sauce. It's not frozen, so it's gonna yeah. label your stuff and you know what's inside it. It's okay if you don't. So I'm gonna make. I need to do this in a big pot. So I'm gonna have two right here, so you do what you can do. So I'm gonna put those in here. Good. Okay, we have our cereal here. These were Honey Nut Cheerios. We were so muggy here yesterday. Someone opened the Cheerios and left them wide open. I don't know about anywhere else, but here it gets so muggy. Those Cheerios absorbed liquid and they tasted like, like ooh, you left them open. And it was literally just a day. So you wanna know how you crisp up your cereal again? Put it in the oven. Put it in the oven. Turn it on for maybe 10, 15 minutes. You can do that with like chips. You can do that with anything dry because it just gets moisture added to it. And now these are first figures. I went and I had a bite and I'm like, ooh, I'm like, who let this open? We literally just opened it yesterday. So now they'll be nice and dry. Just get the moisture out of your cereal. It happens with chips, it happens with anything dry. Yeah, it's perfect. There we go. Now we got some honey nut cereal. That's what I have for breakfast today. It's amazing how moisture will just ruin everything. Last, well not the last one, last thing I want to make right now before I get help the door, you see my timer's on, that means I gotta leave here in 48 minutes. So what I'm gonna do is make some spinach dip. Um, this is, I had spinach, I have a lot of the um, sour cream to use up, so I'm like, this would be a great opportunity to make some spinach dip with some pretzels. Kids will eat this, they'll like this. We haven't had this in a little while. And then I bought a, um, I just wanna do equal Miracle Whip and sour cream. And then I'll go outside and get some green onions for my garden pot. <laughs> it's still alive, by the way. I have to go get it. Um, you guys recommend you get in, like, a trellis for it. So the cucumbers could go up the trellis, plus it would hold the um, tomato plant. So I am excited to try that. We even talked about doing um, like the raised garden things. We have those in the mountains, and so um, I gave them to Lauren to have because... We just had such a wet area in the mountains. It was just not a good, it was not a good place to want to have something grow. <laughs> so here it's nice and dry. Things would grow a whole lot better, but she had a lot more area where it was um, very dry. So it worked better for her that way, but we didn't talk about doing those here because we can actually do that here. Look at that spinach dip, simple. They like this with pretzels. Let me go outside and get some green onions. This is another gorgeous day outside. Oh my goodness, gorgeous. Yesterday it poured rain. 
poured rain. We had terrible lightning storms. It was crazy. The wind was blowing. You saw me put my container outside. So I'm gonna cut some green onions off here. Those look kind of limpy, but the sun, the sun is on them directly right now. And then like when the sun kind of goes over the house in about an hour, hour two hours, it'll uh, perk back up again. So beautiful day. Great outside sunshine. Got the pool going so we can go in it. Got my little container over there. I really like that over there. I gotta move all my stuff back from that terrible wind. So let's go in and make this dip. Hey, Amy. Uh, hey, Amy. Where were you? Ups Did you just come from upstairs? They, these are the other green onions. I was wondering if it, were, it mattered if I put them up or down. It doesn't. They still continue to grow. So I will put these out of my pot because I'm cutting those down and I need to replenish them. So this will enable a whole lot more. So what I'm going to do for dinner is we'll have spaghetti. I pulled out a pret, pretzilla and one of these because this is, I think there's eight in here. And there's eight in here. So this will be a good bread. I'll boil pasta later. I'm going to take a break for a little bit because I have to uh, run and get autumn. Do live. I'll see if I make anything else this afternoon. It's good. I do. I have to cut up these. We got these mangoes. These are supposed to be really good mangoes. And we're going to plant it for a tree out in our yard. So we've got the seed here. Look at that. You take the, the little pity piece in the middle and you break it apart. And then um, you let it, sometimes you let it dry. Greg just tapped into it and pulled out. And there is a seed in there. Look at that. So this you're supposed to let sit for the first and like four or five days and then it'll start sprouting and then you can plant it. So we're going to do that. So I'm going to cut these. We've got two here. I'll cut these and then save the seed as well or leave it out so we can do it later. But just so we can eat these. So I wasn't sure if that second one or that third one was ripe. Obviously it was not, it was greener, but it was like, it was soft on the inside, but the yellow ones were way more soft. I didn't know if it was a different kind. We got it from someone that has them in their yard. And so um, I'm like, well, maybe it's a different tree, but these are good mangoes, learning to love a mango. So I just, I'm like, you have to cut, I guess I gotta learn the proper way. We don't cut them up enough to know. I know you're supposed to do it and do like the slices, which I did this weekend, but I find like it's like a peach and a pear. It's easier just to go around the pit. So this will be good. So you'll have this part in the middle and then um, you can let this dry if you want, but there is a pod in here. So you cut around the edge of it. Greg used some like almost, almost like a tin snip type thing, kind of, they're like pliers. He cut around and pried it open and there's the seed inside of here. So you can get those out. So I'll let that sit, let him do that. But these will be good to munch on and eat. It's good. Okay, so it's been a few hours already. So. Today's been a very busy day. It's not my typical day, just a lot of extra running. So we had soup, delicious. Everybody had soup, it was so good. So I put those in containers, put them away, and then I will start boiling noodles when it's closer to dinner. But I don't have any more food for today, and I'm not gonna cook anymore. So I think I'm gonna take the rest of the day, go sit outside, enjoy some sunshine. So I'll see you in a little bit, we'll make dinner. Took a nice break outside, got to swim in the pool and sit in the sun for a little bit and just kind of relax for the day. That's a good thing. It's a good thing you do when you're feeling like, Busy, it's been a busy week. Busy week for me, even though it's not like so much for you guys, but just a lot of extra going on or outside. It's like, you know what? I'm taking that time. So that's what I'm doing today. So I just made, I had coffee still in the fridge, so I just put some coconut creamer in there and my blueberry, my blueberry flavor. Like that sauce. I still haven't mixed it up with the coconut milk yet. So I don't know, I'm sure it'll be delicious, right? It's actually really good. And I've had, so what I'm gonna do is I'm boiling water, heating up the sauce, and I'm gonna put the rolls in the oven and put together, we've got these salads at the discount store. I'm gonna put two of these in a bowl and mix them up easy. 